G'day, Chris here and welcome back to Clickspring. If you spend a bit of time in the shop making and using small mechanical devices, then it's worthwhile putting a bit of work into the tools required to look after them. And one of the most useful is an oiler. The design is based on the classic stacked oiler, with two ruby reservoirs and a single pithwood insert. It's also an excellent weekend lathe project, with plenty of standard turning operations as well as some fun creative work with form tools and the graver. And whilst I've used brass for the main components of the project, they could easily be made from wood or a wide range of other durable materials as suits your preference. The design is also intended to be fairly customisable and is a good combination of both precision and freehand turning. Some features are best formed as precisely as possible, like for example the fit between each interlocking segment. But other features like the ornamental curves can be formed entirely according to taste. So while it is a precision tool, there's still plenty of scope to have fun hand turning some shapes and just seeing where the process takes you. Now a lot of the guesswork about the curves can be removed by using the graver in combination with form tools. It's a process that I use often across various projects, because it means that once I find a set of shapes that work, I have a good chance of repeating the result across multiple parts. The shapes are very straightforward to form freehand on the grinder, or with smaller mounted grinding wheels. In the case of this concave cutter, I used an abrasive wheel that I happen to have on hand but the actual dimensions are not that important and a wide range of diameters will work just fine. One interesting property of form tools is that every detail of the cutting edge can't help but be printed upon the work. So if the edge can be taken to a very fine polish with say an oil stone or a belt sander, then the cut it generates on the workpiece ends up being very high quality, requiring only a quick tidy up with abrasive paper once complete. And of course, all of this work is something of an investment in the future of your shop, with each cutting tool now available for future projects, or even repeats of this one. Now there's considerable side force generated when using a form tool on the lathe, so at a minimum, some sort of tailstock support is required. And it's worth mentioning that for most of us with the smaller benchtop machines, this length of cutting edge on a form tool is well over what our machines are usually designed to handle so there will be a tendency for chatter. But as always, there are a few ways to get around the problem. One is to minimise the length of that cutting edge as the cut proceeds to depth, by moving the tool ever so slightly from side to side as the cut proceeds. This limits the cut to one side or the other of the tool, and so reduces the tendency for chatter. The final cut is then taken with the machine turned off by simply pulling the chuck through by hand. Ok, so while I continue forming the component profiles, I'd like to briefly cover some points about oiling small mechanisms. The main purpose of lubrication of course is to minimise friction, but it's rarely acceptable to simply dump on some oil and then leave it at that. At the most damaging end of the scale are the aerosol based products. To begin with, the liquid itself isn't a stable lubricant, but more of a solvent. What oil it encounters, it effectively removes. And on a first application to a mechanism tightly bound with old oil and grime, it might even give the appearance of having done some good. But in reality, it sets up the preconditions for future damage to the mechanism. The bearing surfaces are now essentially oil free. Replaced with a volatile material that evaporates to a waxy coating within a few days and provides no meaningful lubrication. What it does very well though, is attract and capture dust. This forms an effective grinding paste that starts to erode the bearing surface. And to add further insult to injury, the aerosol application usually means that the entire mechanism ends up getting a good coating. 
so parts of the machine that would never be lubricated in any circumstance are now coated, attracting dust and slowly being damaged. Now the situation is somewhat improved by applying a good quality oil directly from a bottle nozzle, but it's still very difficult to avoid applying an excessive amount of oil. Too much oil in a clock oil sink for example simply leads to it all trickling away, drawing all of the oil away from the bearing surface. And again, it ends up migrating somewhere it shouldn't be and eventually causing a problem. So the best solution by far is to make sure that the correct amount and type of oil goes exactly where it needs to be. And to do that properly, you need a precision oiler. Now which oil to use depends largely on the role of the component to which it's applied. A watch escaping, for example, requires a much lower viscosity oil compared to, say, the centre wheel pivot of a clock. And this is the reason for the multiple oil reservoirs. Two reservoirs provides capacity for at least two grades of oil, a reasonable compromise for most common mechanisms. The key to controlling the amount of oil applied are the oiler nibs, which can be formed to whatever size best suits the scale of your devices. And the nibs are also a good example of how the stock that will eventually form the component can also be used as a cutting tool. In this case, the hardened pivot steel is formed into a spade drill to open up the hole that will eventually be occupied by the same material once it becomes a completed part. The nibs can be bonded into place with a modern adhesive or by using something more traditional like shellac. The jewels work well as a press fit but again could be bonded into place with shellac or a modern adhesive. The oil absorption properties of pith wood make it most suitable for cleaning dirt and oil from the nibs and for preventing cross-contamination between the different oil grades.
In use, a drop or two of oil is transferred from the main oil supply. The smallest quantity can then be picked up and precisely applied to the mechanism. Once the job is complete, the whole stack can be reassembled, sealing off each reservoir from outside contamination, and so protecting the oil within for future use later in that session of work. It's a great tool to have in the shop, and makes it that much easier to be sure that all you ever have are well-oiled machines. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.